I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve this chemical transformation and figure out the mechanism. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is what's known as a pain rearrangement. In a pain rearrangement, you have a hydroxyl group that can be deprotonated by strongly basic conditions, which will result in the inverted nucleophilic attack of an epoxide carbon resulting in a new epoxide and a terminal carbon, as is the case in this example. Now, these strongly basic conditions are required to drive this reaction towards product formation, so you typically see really strong bases in use, where the first step is going to be deprotonation of this hydroxyl group to make an alkoxide. The resulting alkoxide looks basically the same, where now you have this O- minus group adjacent to the epoxide structure. So now this epoxide structure can be attacked by the fact that this oxygen has these lone pairs on them. From here, that next step is gonna be the invertive attack, which will serve to open up this epoxide ring and they're gonna end up being on opposite sides. That's what invertive attack means. And in doing so, we'd be generating a new carbon oxygen here and breaking free this carbon and oxygen bond. And in fact, the product of this transformation is gonna to start to look very similar to the one that we see in our final product because now we have generated this new epoxide and all that remains is gonna be this terminal alkoxide. Now importantly, in this first deprotonation step, we generated water which can subsequently be deprotonated by this alkoxide. And it's that last step which will come and deprotonate this hydrogen to remake our OH- and drive this reaction towards product formation. Now importantly for these reactions, we only had these two adjacent groups that can interact with one another. However, there are examples when you have multiple epoxides or alkoxides a part of the same molecule that you could even see a cascade effect occurring. And again, this is an example of what's known as the pain rearrangement. If you enjoyed today's mechanism, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop it as a comment down below, and don't forget, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.